accepting his sustenance. We believe that every person born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has certain sustenance. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you, he created with you your sustenance. You may tell me, but why there are so many poor people in the world? If God created enough sustenance for everybody, why there are so many poor people, needy, hungry people? And my reply to you is God created enough food for everybody, enough wealth for everybody. But it is this human being, greed, that pushes him to take others' shares and denies them their own share. Otherwise, Allah has created enough food for everybody, enough wealth for everybody. Do you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the statistics say that 1%, only 1% of the world population, they own 60% of the world wealth, 1%. 1% of the world's population, they own 60% of the world wealth. The other 99% share the other 40%. So you tell me there is no wealth? There is no money? No, there is so much wealth, so much money, so much food. Do you know how much food we waste every year in this country? Average, average American individual wastes what is worth $1,500 of good food, edible food. Every year, every year, every year, you and I waste average $1,500 of uh, edible food. We throw it away in the garbage. With this food, I could have fed another family, not in America probably, but in Africa, in Bangladesh, in God knows where. So, it is not God who did, it, did not create enough sustenance. It is us, we human beings. It is our own greed. It is our own injustice. That keeps many people deprived, while many other people have so much. A guy, historians, his name is Asma'i. He says, one day I was walking in the street of Kufa, the ancient city of Kufa. He says, I saw a man welling, crying. I approached him. I asked him. What's going on? Why are you crying? He says, because it's been three days I have not eaten anything. I'm in pain. I need something to eat. He says, I continued my way. Two minutes later, I see another guy putting his hand on his stomach, also suffering from his stomach. Ah, oh, ah, oh. I came to him. What's going on? He says, I was invited to a wedding. And I ate, I ate, I ate too much, my stomach is hurting. Asma'i says, subhanAllah, if this guy has given a little bit of his extra food to the first one, neither would have suffered. One is suffering because of not having enough food. The other is suffering because of having so much food. Imagine if one would be a little more merciful to the second one, neither would suffer, neither would suffer. Many people go to the doctors, many people go to doctors and their problems could be avoided by being moderate and eating. Some of us don't, we're not moderate and that's what causes many of illnesses. It causes high cholesterol. It causes heart issues. It causes high blood pressure. It's all about food. It's all about food. Average American now 
in the year 2018, 19, consumes 43 bags of sugar. You know this one that's sold in uh, what is called the, uh, you know what I mean, the bag of sugar that contains how many? Three or five pounds. 43 bags a year. While in year 1917, 100 years ago, an American could consume only one. Only one. Because he could not afford more than one. And now you tell me why we have so much obesity. Why we have so much problem with our health. Why we have so many people dying out of heart attack. And uh, blocked veins. Because of having too much. Not because having too little. There are people, nations who are dying due to having too little. And we have people who are also suffering and dying because of having too much. Why? Because of the greed. Because of the greed. So, <coughs> one way to fight my greed, my dear brothers and sisters, is by telling myself, what brings stability to me is not greed. Whatever God has described for me, whatever He had decreed for me, I shall get it. I shall not be in a hurry for it. That doesn't mean I would be lazy. No, I need to be a hardworking person. Go to work. Go and be a hardworking person. But don't be so desperate to get the money. Don't use illegal, unlawful, immoral ways to gain more money. Just be normal. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, one day came to the masjid. He was passing by masjid. He decided to go inside the masjid, pray two rak'ah and continues his way. He had a horse. He was riding a horse, and now there is a saddle on the horse. So when the imam <coughs> came off his horse to go inside the masjid, he wanted someone to watch over his horse so nobody would steal the saddle. So the imam finds someone, a guy in nearby, and he says, would you watch over my horse for five minutes? I go inside to pray and I come back. He says, fine. The minute the imam goes inside, the guy who's supposed to watch over his horse, he looks at the saddle and he says, you know what, let me steal the saddle. He steals the saddle. He comes to a nearby store and he sells it. For how much? For one dirham. He takes the one dirham and he runs away. Two minutes later, Imam Ali comes out. What does he find? The horse without a saddle. He realized the man stole it. What does the Imam go? The Imam goes to the same exact store. And he finds the saddle. The Imam doesn't tell the person, the owner, store owner, that this is mine. He says, how much you sell the saddle for? He says, for one dollar. The same, one dirham, I'm sorry. One dirham. The same amount... He purchased it for. The Imam gave him one dirham and he took the saddle. And then the Imam was smiling. He says, Subhanallah, I had in mind to give this guy one dirham. I had in mind to give him one dirham. But look at the greed. And instead of taking this dirham in a halal way, he got the one dirham, but in a haram way. I had in mind to give him one dirham. Had he waited three more minutes, I would have come out and given him a dirham for his, you know, time. But his greed didn't let him. He took the saddle, he sold it for one dirham, but that was in a haram way. Imam Ali comes and he pays the same store owner, the same dirham, and he takes it back. So, this is an example, my dear brothers and sisters, that greed doesn't help me to be richer at all. It doesn't help me at all to be more happier in life. If any, 
If anything, it makes me more miserable. Yesterday, my dear brothers and sisters, yesterday in New York Times, I'm sure some of you read New York Times and you have access to it online. Yesterday's issue, Saturday, go read the story. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A young guy, he is extremely wealthy, privileged, spoiled, Gilbert, Mr. Gilbert. He graduated, his parents paid for his uh, boarding school, for his college. They sent him to Princeton University, one of the most prestigious universities in this country. And he got a degree from Princeton, but he never found a job. Never. He's 35 years old. He's lazy. Why? Because all his life, he was a spoiled. He got everything he wanted. So why I work? If I get everything I want, why bother? And this is the problem, my dear brothers and sisters. I say to those parents who spoil their kids too much, I tell them, you are really spoiling them. You are really spoiling them. By giving your children everything they want, you're not doing them anything good. If anything, you are spoiling them. You are corrupting them. You need some time to teach your son or daughter to stand on their feet. To know the, to, to know the value of the na'ma. Don't be stingy with your kids. Give them. But give them responsibly. Don't give them irresponsibly. Make them understand that what you have given them, you worked hard for it. So they know the value. If you don't do this, they will never know the value of na'ma. They will never appreciate your hard work. Be generous with your kids, but also do not spoil them. My son wants a uh, uh, the latest, what is the latest of iPhone? 11? 11 Pro? Huh? Wallahi, those kids these days are really so demanding. They go and find out what is the latest technology and they come and tell you, Dad, I need this 11 Pro. What is 11 Pro? I don't even know what it is. They know. They know everything. So don't give in. Tell them, you know what? If you pass this year's exam, if you finish your high school diploma, if you do something, if you go to the masjid and listen to 10 lectures, then I will buy you. Make them feel there is price for it. Don't give them everything for free because they will not appreciate it. Make them understand there is a value for what they are asking. So, unfortunately, many parents, many wealthy parents think by spoiling their kids, they are doing them a favor. You're not doing them any favor. So this guy, Mr. Gilbert, or Gilbert, is very privileged. His father is a head of hedge fund in New York. They live in Manhattan. And in a, in a nice apartment in Manhattan. But he lives separately. The son lives separately. And he is not so good with his father. He comes once every one month and he fights according to the mother and leaves. His father gives him $1,000 allowance every week. $4,000. Every month he gets for doing nothing because he's not working. Every time his father gives him his allowance, he tells him, Daddy, you have to go and find a job. Okay, it's not your business. Leave me alone. So in order to pressure the son to go and find a job, the father cuts the allowance from 1000 to $700 a month. And here the son comes. And he says to his mother, I want to talk to my father privately. The mother is so excited that finally 
the son is coming to talk to his father one on one that's nice of him she says son do you need anything he says yeah go buy me a sandwich from outside the minute she goes outside she says there's something in me dreadful feeling that something wrong may happen i came back <clears throat> two minutes later i see the son shooting his father in a pistol then the father is swimming in a drenched in a pool of blood why because he did not pay me my one thousand dollars look look what greed does he kills his father he kills his father the person who was the reason for his existence for his all existence he kills him for paying him $300 less i'm entitled this is my money my father was not supposed to cut my check my allowance this is my money he was not supposed to do that see what the greed does my dear brothers and sisters especially when there is no strong base of faith when many of people in this country suffer of having no faith no strong faith no deterrence at all they feel they are entitled they feel they can do anything they want i'm in a free country i can do anything i want there is no sense of responsibility there is no sense of morality is this why what you do to your father your father i mentioned this hadith yesterday and i mentioned it here three months ago or four months ago i'm not sure there is no religion teaches people how to respect parents as much as islam does all religions all religions christianity judaism they all teach and instruct their followers to respect parents but particularly islam there is so much emphasis that the prophet says if you look at your parents look just looking you're not giving them any money you're not uh, driving them anywhere you're not feeding them you're just looking at your parents with love man nadara ila walidayhi nadara rahma with love i'm looking i'm just looking at my parents with love katab allah bi dhalika lahu thawab hajj allah will give you the reward of hajj as if you have went to hajj you didn't do anything you didn't travel you didn't go to Mecca, you didn't get the visa, you didn't spend $10,000, you didn't take a break and travel for three weeks, you didn't not do nothing. You are at home, sitting next to your parents, all you do, you look with a big smile on your face, you look at your parents. They look filled with love and rahmah and compassion. God will give you the reward of one hajj. Now a person asked the Prophet, the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, how about if I look at them ten times a day? Would I also get ten hajj? He says, if you look at them one hundred thousand times a day, you will get the reward of one hundred thousand hajj. This is the religion of Islam. That tells you loving parents respecting parents being nice to parents is a shortcut alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah it's a shortcut way to paradise it is a religion that says al jannatu tahta aqdam al ummahat paradise rests beneath the foot of your mother meaning don't go searching for paradise only in mecca in karbala in najaf at the mosque that's good but if you want a shortcut for paradise be nice to your mother be nice to your father be at their disposal whenever they need you never say no to them never say i am busy 
You know, there is a very true expression, Greek expression, very true. I will share it with you, and you will tell me how true it is. It says, Father, Father never feels burdened to feed seven kids, but seven kids feel burdened to feed, to feed one father. Isn't that true? My father never felt burdened when he had nine children. My father had nine children. He goes, he never says, why? I have too much children. My God, may God help me. He never says that. He goes and he works hard. The more kids he has, the more harder he works. And he never complains to any person that, wow, I have so many children I have to feed. But look at the issue on the, uh, on the contrary. One father is in need. He is in the old country. He writes a letter to his children, I am in need. So those seven children gather. How much are you going to give? I am going to do my best. I will give him $50 a month. How about you? I cannot commit because, you know, I have so many demands. My wife wants so many things. My kids, I may give him $25 if I can afford it. And he can afford it. He can afford tenfolds of that. So they all bring excuses. When my father becomes ill and he needs some extra care, the seven kids now are murmuring. Who will take the father? You take him one week, one day of the... No, no, I can't, please. You know I have work. You know I cannot do this. The other one says, you know, uh, my wife will not accept. She will not. She, decide, she told me she will leave the house if you bring your father here. When he was taking care of me, he took care of me and seven other children. He never complained. He never said, ah, or ouch. He never felt this burden on his shoulder. Why it is me who feel this, making 100 excuse to run away from my responsibility. So, I go back to the subject, my dear brothers and sisters. And the subject was greed. One way to fight our greed is by keeping in mind that Allah is the one behind your sustenance. I may become the most wealthiest person on earth, but that doesn't mean I will become the most the most happiest person on earth. You know, my father said, this is a story my father told me once. He was invited in Kuwait. You know Kuwait, we lived in Kuwait. It's a very rich country. So he says, I was invited one day at someone's house. And there were all type of food, all type of food on the table. A guy sitting next to me was introduced as the second wealthiest, he was introduced to me as the second wealthiest person in the country. The second wealthiest person in the country. A multi-billionaire. He was sitting next to me when they were having iftar in Ramadan. My father says there were at least 17, 18 type of food on the table. This man, the most, the second wealthiest person in the country, could not eat. I saw him not eating, but soup, only soup. He ate soup only. And I tell him, why don't you eat? There are so many, he says, say it, I can't eat. I said, why? Doctor told me you cannot eat but soup. Subhanallah, he owns, he has all the money of the world. But he cannot eat the food me and Sayyid Hari Saleh can eat. He eats only soup. He can't. All this money could not enable him 
to eat what any ordinary person can eat in Ramadan. He can. Has a problem in his stomach that he cannot eat. It has to be soup only. What do I do with this money? Can you tell me? If I have all the money of the world, but I yet cannot eat but soup. What does this mean? This means when you enjoy the food, it is not the money. It is not the money. It is the health God has provided you. Without the health God has provided you, you could not have enjoyed the food. Because you can have millions of dollars and you can afford buying all the food of the world. But if God didn't give you good health to eat, you will not be able to eat. Always keep God in mind. Always take Him in consideration when you do your math. When you do your calculation. Keep Him in the, in the equation. Don't think only through money and wealth and the prestige I can advance. No. No, not at all. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give me His blessings, if Allah doesn't give me His blessings, I can't move an inch. This morning when you all woke up, you decided to take a shower, go into your car, and come to IIA, and enjoy the breakfast, and listen to lecture. How was that possible for you? Because it's God's blessing. How? Because Allah allowed the blood in your vessels to flow naturally. Had a clot, a clot, small clot, struck your brain, very small clot, struck your brain, Barring the blood from flowing, you could not have get up from your bed. You would have been paralyzed. You would have called 911 to come and take you to the hospital. We take God's bounties for granted. We never realize how lucky we are. Every day when we wake up in the morning, when we go to work, when we go to Starbucks, when we go to, you know, friend's house, how lucky we are that I could have been paralyzed by a small clot. One drop of water, uh, one drop of blood can cause my death. I never realized that. I take everything for granted. But when it happens, God forbid, what do I do? I go begging God. Oh Allah. Please help me. Go to this shaykh. Go to the sayyid. All my life, I was heedless of the bounties Allah has given me. I was chasing a mirage called wealth and richness. Not knowing I am already rich. With, through my health, through having good family, through having the security, I'm already rich. I shouldn't chase the mirage. Richness is not by acquiring only money and dollars. Because you may acquire it, but then it doesn't help you. It doesn't do you anything. Allahumma gfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته